This short video will analyze, design and detail and schedule a simple three span continuous concrete beam. So we'll just start master series and we'll log in as a PowerPad user and we'll come down to the concrete beam designers and we'll take a brand new file example one and create. My layout is in four columns if it's not you can choose to change that around by clicking here so back to four columns I'm going to put the first span seven meters the second span will be eight and the third span will be seven so seven eight and seven meters I'm going to set the breadth of the section it's going to be a T section so just change that to T and the overall width of the flange we're going to put it two meters which will be more than adequate the depth of the flange will be 175 millimeters and the breadth of the web will be 300 with an overall width or depth of 600 so 600 by 300 with a 175 flange wide I'm going to put a dead load in just of the self weight of the 175 slab so what 4.2 kilonewtons the live load will be four plus one and a half partitions so let's make that 5.5 and that will carry through now at the minute I'm in the BS if I just change to EC2 and UK National Annex I'm going to use one 1.350 and 1 1.5 for my patterned loading and we will add in self weight at a load of 24 kilonewtons per meter cubed or we could even make that 26. We're going to use a spacing and we'll make that spacing 5 meters so all the loads will be magnified up by that value. We don't need a serviceability live load only because it's not a steel design. Supports, we will keep the supports in at 300 by 300 and that will just give us a continuous beam give us a support width each time with zero above zero below and no upper columns my fixed these will all be pinned so it'll give us pinned fixed fixed and pinned point loads I'm going to come along and we're going to put in three point loads one on span one one span two and one span three we'll make them all 35 kilonewtons and no live components and we'll move them about so the first one will be at 5.5 meters along on span one span two will move that to 6.5 and span three will be more centric at four so there we go there's our diagram coming up nice and neat that's our, our analysis done if we go into our design and we will have a look at the defaults so auto design method we're going to go for anything from 12s to 32s we'll have three bars top and bottom uh, two legs and links will be anything from 100 to 300 covers we're going to make those 25 all round and just say set all to 25 and we'll have no worry of spacers beam curtailment we'll go for detailed uh, top and bars to support so we get a cage and one bar group per zone and everything else I'm happy with sidebars we don't need to worry about sidebars and then laps to say minimum 600 mil and the bar end detailing I'm going to put in 50 mil short at either end so 50 mil sh short from the surface of the column and don't need anything there we will go for 64 points that's fine and everything at 25 millimeters and finally EC2 8666 to form type 2 and 500 B bars we'll use a C3240 steel and everything else will be as normal and say okay 
and it will now come along and give me some basic reinforcement in the first span and if I go auto design you'll see 332s, 332s and 320s and if I go and auto size that and auto size that you'll see that it is going to give us a very confined and restricted reinforcement so 332s and 325s is my inner support what I can do is I can first of all look around and see you know, do we really need those if we were to pull those down we end up with a quite a big problem um, the first thing I'm going to think about is going back to my auto design and going for 4 and 4 on auto design we end up with 4 bars in most locations again we could drop those down so 325, 332s 420s and 420s and really I'm not liking this design so what I'm going to do is I am going to change the section size so I'm just going to come out and I'm going to go from 600 to 750 and I'm going to go from 300 to 400 wide back into my design and auto size and we should find we get better reinforcement let's do the whole run and I'm now getting four, four and four throughout and just checking this one out 425s, 416s, 432s on the supports here and again down to 425s but we can play around with this because what we can do particularly with these here is we can say well let's try a 25s and with the 25s let's go to the beam and see if we can suddenly start to do a bit of redistribution and how effective that will be in pulling it up so 20 25 percent redistribution here move over to this one and we'll distribute this one by 25 as well and then we'll see over here with 32 we're going to pull them down to 25s again using the right mouse click and we're going to right redistribute that by 25 percent not quite 30% is going to work over to the right hand side and again so what we've done we've sculpted this to work and we'll just come back and make them all 30% so a full 30% redistribution on all the internal spans allows me to get 20s and 25s as my rebar in the design what we can also see here is the links that are applied to the design and we will see it's all two legs now the design looks good here if I double click it looks good in the shear design I'm back again but if I click in here we will find that we have a problem with the amount of steel and particularly on the bottom laps and the link pitches so we want link pinch around the laps needs to be reduced and we need to reduce the link pitches elsewhere uh, we need to reduce the number of bars now we can reduce the number of bars and it's always the bottom that's the problem we can reduce the number of bars by thinking about taking this and reducing this down we can't really because we do get this bar drag that's giving us a bit of a force here and um, we could try and pull that one down a bit we're not getting that reduction as much as we want we still have too much re reinforcement lying in the one layer so what we can do we can do two things we can either lift this 
support steel up or we could crank the bars. In my case, I think that it would be more sensible to highlight one of these bars and come along and we're going to move it from one layer to another. So now it's no longer a problem. I'm going to take this and we're going to lift these up. So they're going to be sitting above. And now just ever so slightly we get this error and you might decide to go up to the 25s there. Have a double click and it's just the link pitch that's a problem. So we can override the links over the nominal area. We can increase the length of the nominal area and it will be this nominal area. We're just going to make that until it's out past the links and you can see now it's out past the laps. Now we're failing. It's gone blue. Increase it with the left mouse button and we're now out past that. So we've got that lapped area with the higher number of links. And if we then move across to the second span, we just double click on this and we'll see that it is again just this problem with the lap, bottom lap left. So again, all we're going to do is move to this bar and like in the other side, back to the beam data, we move it up to the upper level and we will do the same automatically over here and we'll have to just lift this one as well. And that now is my design complete for my three sides. So a wee bit of playing around was done here. And what you'll notice if you're unfamiliar with the B with the Euro code is we're not dealing with moments, we're dealing with the tensile capacities. And we're also doing with something called shear drag. Or the tension is increased due to the shear links. And we get this increase above our elastic and our plastic or redistributed values. So that's the solution for you. Very simply, we can export that as a DXF file. Um, we'll not do any more matching. Um, we're going to send it out to BS8666. So it'll all be titled up. Um, we're going to export the DXF. Off it goes. And in comes AutoCAD. Doesn't really matter which version because uh, we're just bringing in a DXF line drawing. So very straightforward and simple, hopefully. And here we go with the details of all the bars and you'll see the bar mark 7 been reused where necessary for my links and the like. So bar mark B1006 on the second span. There we go, pan across and we see the B6. B1006 bars been used here for links as well. So bars have been reused where necessary. And what we can also do Coming back to my steel design is I can also export, or should one say print, a bar schedule and again it's 666 schedule and out it will come with all of the rebar scheduled for you. Euro 06s, there's quite a lot of them because it's used in more than one area and all your dimensions all there fully annotated up for you. You also could see the weight per bar and then we can see all the bar shapes used in the output and we can print that. So that's very simply using the master beam concrete beam designer a simple three span beam. Now if you have power pad you're able to do three span beams. If you have the full version you can do up to 16 span beams or if you have neither you can go and use master frame itself in continuous beam mode and do exactly the same thing. And I'm just going to bring in a similar continuous beam that I've already done in master frame. And I put it in the front view, turn on my dots, you'll see it is a similar beam and the design is no different. So I go into my concrete beam design and in I come 
and detail that up. In this case, it's a rectangular beam. So it's a very similar process to do it in either of those programs.